Hey, the very first time that I discovered shape dividers in Elementor, I was blown away. Because I just love how you could start to add varying shapes uh, to the top and the bottom of your sections. And I thought it was a wonderful little um, addition in terms of designing. Now, I don't overuse it because I feel like you don't want to just put it into every single website. It's got to earn its place. But when you use it, it is fantastic and it can make a little bit of a difference. However, there is a little bit of a limitation. You can always do the top and bottom and you can't make it vertical. Now, I know there are ways you can do this with bits of coding and there are tutorials out there. But they're not all the easiest to understand or to implement if you're not massively into coding and things like that. So is there a way that we can mess around with the shape divider and make it vertical? But also, can we add in some animation? Aha! Uh -huh. And can we do a little bit more with it and have some really varied styles on top of what we already get? Well, guess what? Yes, we can. Maxime, who's part of the Elemental community uh, group, uh, he's on Facebook. He does tons of tutorials, elemental.how.com. Um, he has created a tool which is free to use. There is a premium add-on as well, but we're going to be focusing on the free aspect, and I'll talk about the premium as well. And he shared it with me, and I think it's really, really cool, and I wanted to create a video for you. I'm Imran Sadiq, part of Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, and follow, so you can keep up to date with everything to do with Elementor, WordPress to help you, your clients, and of course, your business. Nah, isn't that why we're here? Okay, well, probably not why we're here, but hey, who cares? Right, so shape dividers, you know how they operate, okay? You go to a section, you go to style, you then, uh, oops, sorry, let me click on section. You go to style and then you have shape divider and you can decide if you're going to have a shape divider for the top or the bottom. You can flip them around in terms of how they look. You can get them to overlap onto any of the other content you have on the page as well. So they're quite cool in what they can do. But like I said, you can't really like go over, uh, well, you can't put them vertically basically. So let's see how we could do this. So I've just got an example here and showing you a shape divider. If you go to shapedividers.com, this is what you're going to see. It is a tree with a shape divider over it. No, it's, you've got some uh, tools on your left hand side and they're going to allow you to start to align where does your shape divider go. Okay, now just stay with me on this. We have top, we have right, we have bottom, and we have left. Now you're going to be going, well, the top and bottom, we've already got that. Why do I need this tool to do that? Just hold on a second, okay? I'm just going to change the color of this to be black, okay? Just keeping with what color I'd picked before. You can pick whatever color you want. You can even add in the hex code or the RGB code, whatever you want to do, okay? I'm going to put this on the right hand side, okay? Because um, at the moment, I've got an image. If you go back to over here, I've got an image on the right hand side. I now want the shape divider to be like over that in a way or under it. But then I want the wavy pattern to be coming towards the, the wording over here. OK, so I'm going to go on the right hand side. I can start to mess around with the axes. Bit, bit like the width and height function you get in shape divider. OK, so I'm just going to go with like that for now. And we'll, we'll leave it like that, okay? I'm not, I'm just showing you how it works. We can obviously flip it, which is kind of just flipping it in its axes. Now, there is a responsive button here as well. So you can start to decide on what is gonna be the exact, you know, the width and height or the axes when you go from desktop to tablet to mobile. So you can definitely do that here. But I'm gonna be focusing on the animate. Did you notice that button? Watch this. Just look at that screen. And what it will do is it will go and for some of the shape dividers, it gets to a point and then it reverses back again. It like it loops a bit like this. OK, but just look at that effect. How soothing is that? Now, what if you don't want that wavy pattern? Well, if you move your mouse over to the right hand side, which is that way, you're going to get loads and loads of different. Oh, let me just do that again. You're going to get loads of different styles. So some of these you will recognize like the triangular styles you know, the bookmark or whatever it's called, but then you start to get some much more funkier ones. I mean, look at this. What, what, what magic is this? I mean, look at that. Is it animating? Yes, it is. There you go. It's animating. It's animating, but it's doing it at a much more slower rate. But that's probably because um, so if I do this, it's now going to be even slower. If I put it down to a four, 
you're going to see it go down a lot quicker. So you can start to mess around with literally how the animation works. And if I go over here, look, there are tons of different styles here. I mean, look, what's this one? Okay, that one's, oh, oh, there you go, there you go, there you go, there you go. Did you see that? The little wavy pattern, there we go. It's now moving around. And you see what I mean about the, like, the almost like the oscillating effect where eventually it comes back and forth. But again, I think this is really, really funky. And there are some, I mean, I've got to say hats off to Maxime. Like, I don't know how long it's taken him to do this and just how he's created it. There we go, look at that style. I mean, this is where you're now adding in just something a little bit different to your page. And I'm not, I'm not going to go through all of these. We've got droplets. We've got this like, you know, like, I mean, I mean, that's like a piano, isn't it? Almost. Um, but there are some really funky styles here and you are probably going to find something that kind of works for you in terms of what you want to look for. Okay. I'm just going to go back to this one, actually, kind of like um, a slight worthy pattern, but it's kind of just moving, but it's, it's easy on the eye. You'll notice it, but you might not fully notice it. So it's pretty good. Right. Of course, though, you can put this on the bottom right and the top so you can now see how the top and bottom suddenly becomes a lot more different as to what you're used to let's leave it on the right so how do we get this into elemental this is not a plugin by the way yet and i'm hoping that maxine will eventually get it to that stage but right now it's an easy to use website okay now you will eventually if you keep scrolling you will get to some of these um um shape dividers which are actually premium so you can see the word premium at the top there okay so the one I'm using at the moment, that is not premium, okay? But when you scroll down, you'll see the word premium appear. So if you now want to get a premium one, okay, and you try and copy the code. So I'll show you what happens. Let's just pick that one for now, okay? And I now want to get the premium version. When you click it, you'll get taken to a website. And the buy now cost for this is $29 for the year. So if you do want the premium versions, it is, I think, quite affordable, especially if you're an agency or you're going to be using this quite a lot. Right, let's just go back. back, 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 back to where we were. Okay, right, let me just put back again uh, the one I was using, which was that one. There we go. So that's the style we're going for at the moment. What you then do is click copy code. It has now copied that code into your clipboard or wherever your copy board exists in the virtual universe or the matrix. Yeah. Okay, what you then do is go back to your page. Now, I'm going to go over here. Now, here's where you have to like bear a few things in account. And if you get stuck on the shapedividers.com, there is a link here that says how to add to your page. And you click that and it takes you through to Maxime's website where it clearly states down how do you add this to your page or your section or your column. So I'm just kind of float following the same steps, okay? So if we wanted to add a top or a bottom, so a horizontal shape divider, top or bottom, you add it into your, well, you would add a bit of code or a class name, sorry, let me get it right, into your section. If you're adding a vertical, which is what we have, you add it into your column. But before you do any of that, before you do any of that, what you've got to do is add in some HTML. So we are just going to type in HTML and we're just going to drop this in over here. Okay, HTML. It's not going to take up any space. It's like an invisible little bit of code. And then over here, we just paste in the code we copied. So over here, we clicked copy code. You go over to um, your wherever you are and you paste it in. Now at the moment, it is looking huge, isn't it? Right? Okay. So we've got our, sorry, there's our code there. Now, there are a few things you need to do. Where it says overflow hidden, sorry, I made a mistake. Before you paste it, you must type style, okay? And then close that down and then you'll get the opening and closing um, syntax for style. So uh, greater, less than symbol style, greater than symbol, and then you'll get the closing um, uh, code as well. In between that, paste in the HTML, right? So get the code, Type in style, you'll get the ending code as well, then paste it in, and that now adds it in. The second thing you need to do, where it says overflow, colon, hidden, after the word hidden, before you get to the semicolon, you need to do exclamation mark, important, okay? Exclamation mark, important. This is quite important, which is why it's important. 
So style, paste it in. And then on the second line, overflow hidden, before the semicolon on hidden, you put exclamation mark, like with a dot and a line, and then you put in the word important. Okay, I hope that's pretty simple and easy to remember that, okay? Once you've done that, you then want to now decide, right, if it is a horizontal shape divider, you go to your section, you go to advanced, and you will paste into here, let me just go back to the HTML, this bit here. So where it says shaped dividers underscore com 8269, you will have a different code for whatever you've produced or however you produced it. That code you want to stick in, okay, to your class name. But if it's a horizontal, you go to section, advanced, and put it in as a CSS class. You paste it there. But I want mine to be vertical. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to go to this column because actually, even though I want it to be like, uh, like the divider to be behind the image, the curly bit, I want to be not on the image. And it will make sense what I mean when I do it right now, because it's actually hitting the right hand side. Stay with me on this. I go to the column, I go to advanced, and in CSS class, I will now put in the name. So dividers com 8269. Can you see what it's done there? So over here, we have the divider and we have this black space to the right of it. When you actually move it over, you're only getting the bit, which is the divider. You're not getting all of the black, all of that on the right hand side. And that is why you have to now add that in over here. So on my column two, I'm gonna go to style and my background, this probably is not gonna work now because yeah, I forgot. So this image I've got is not a transparent background. So sorry, I made that mistake. Okay, so I'm just going to put this to be middle aligned, center aligned, middle. There we go. All right, so we pretend it was a transparent background, okay? Um, but what you're now getting is the same kind of look as what you had here. Black on the right hand side, shape divider there. Black on the hand, right hand side, shape divider there. Now you might now look at that and go, actually, the thickness of that is too much. So this is where you now might want to like shrink it out or whatever. Again, copy the code. So I'm just going to copy that code, which I have. I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to basically get rid of all of that. Just type in style again, get the end code again, style like that. And I shouldn't do it too many times, should I? God, I'm so trigger happy here today. Right, there you go. Add in the code. It's now one, two, three, six. Let me go over here. Let me just change this to be uh, one, two, three, six as well. So every time you change it, you've got to do have to change the code. So there you go. That's now a bit more slimmer in terms of how it's looking, right? Um, I could now just pick up these columns and start to do this. So I can now shrink it and make it as big as I want. But what I now have is, in effect, and if you just look at it there, okay, I probably have to play around the axis so I don't get that little bit of like movement there, as you can see on the screen. But I now have a shape divider. And if I was to get rid of this shape divider at the top here, Eventually, that's what you're going to get. And I feel like that there are so many uses for this that you could start to use either as a horizontal or the vertical for your columns. And like if you wanted it the other way around, you would have used the left placement for the shape divider. Look, shapedividers.com. It's free, easy to use. And uh, if my steps don't make sense, then please, you know, make sure you click on the link to see what he's put as well. But I, I really do recommend this. And I say hats off, Maxime. Brilliant, brilliant job. Well done. Hey, I hope you like. I hope you subscribe and I'll see you soon.